What we're going to be looking at today is the bending moment apparatus HST10. So if you're turning your hand out to the practical observation form first, the whole idea is that you are making sure that you have the correct PPE. So at the minimum, it's a laboratory coat and eye protection. So we have a beam. The beam is, is 900 millimeters long. So we're starting it, um, making sure that our our reaction is at zero and our reaction is at 900. We have a beam is made up of a short beam and a longer beam where there's a break at 300 millimeters. We have a level on the top and you'll find that we'll be adjusting the understung adjuster um, down here once we apply loads and this will have an impact upon this cantilever here. This cantilever, when you adjust it here, it will put a strain on this cantilever. The strain is, is measured and it sends a value to our HDA 200. Now I've just plugged in the HDA 200 and there's two options. You can either connect it to a PC, a USB, or you can take some local readings. This is what we'll be doing for today. So clicking on local mode, and what we have is a, a strain reading coming straight from the, from the cantilever. Now, I'm going to, following the instructions, what we are supposed to do is, is make sure that the level is across both beams. So it's, it's just left of W2. You've got W1, W2, W3. These are where we'd be placing our loads. So they're representing forces acting upon the beam. So we've got W1, and according to the book, W1 is 100 millimeters in, W2 is 300, and W2 is 300, and W3 is at 600. So we find the approximate sort of location to make sure that our forces are acting down those points. So there's no loads on at the moment. Now I'm gonna adjust the beams to make the Make them level. Once they are level, I can then tear or set to zero the HDA. Now, when I was adjusting the the, the, um, the screw here, you, you would have seen the HDA changing. So I'm going to press tear, which is this top button. So this is setting my strain to zero so I can write in my table one for a zero load I have a zero and mu epsilon so it's times 10 to the minus 6 strain so this is the strain value so I can put that into my table what I'm going to do is we're going to work out the, the strain for the different loading conditions one, two, three, and four. We'll write them all down and then we'll, we'll have a look at the practical compared to the theoretical when we start doing the calculations. We've got to comprehend the action of moment of resistance in a beam. We'll be converting strain readings to force readings. So set up the beams and weight hangers in the position shown above. So we've done that. It says that hanger two should be resting within the groove and the, the level is just to the left of that, spanning across the gap 300 millimetres in. So part two is that we'll be adding a 10 newton weight. So we've got a 10 newton weight. We'll be adding that to W1. And if you watch the HDA, that value should change as we add the 10 newtons to W1. Now that's adjusted the bubble slightly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust tightening clockwise to level up the beam. As I'm applying a clockwise motion, it is putting a force on the end of this cantilever. And we can take off a reading. So we've got a reading of 100 and 93 and we've got minus so I'm going to write within here 
minus 0 0.192. So that's for 10 newtons at W1. Then moving on to part three. So I'll be removing the 10 newton weight. I have to re-level the, the beam. So our strain's gone down here to zero. I'm not exactly in the same place, but I'll be pressing tear. Then I'll be putting 10 newtons onto W2. I level the beam. So that's adding strain onto the cantilever. And that's measured within our HDA. So we've got a value of minus 552. So within the W2 column, put in minus five, five, two. It's jumping in between five, five, one and five, five, two. Now put five, five, two. Sometimes the temperature or just the movement, the vibration can adjust the, the strain. It's very sensitive. So that's my um, second reading. And then we move on to part four. So again, just remove the 10. It's approximately in the middle again. Press tear. Four is that we put a 10 newton weight on hanger three. That's at 600 millimeters along the beam. So we've got a, a value of minus Two six, two six four. And we can over a couple of pages, and we can put that strain value into our formula, where you've got a value of a. A is the the Young's modulus for the cantilever material here, so at seventy thousand. And then we've got a second moment area. So the second moment area is based upon the bd cubed over. 12 of this cantilever. So we'll, we'll do those calculations in a moment. And also we've got our Y value. So in terms of the, the thickness of the, the beam itself, it's 3.10. If you divide that by two, we got our Y value of 1.55. So that's the second moment of area of the, of the cantilever here. If we move on to the uh, second part, so keep the hangers in the same locations. So we've got 100, 300, and 600. We're gonna place a five Newton load on W2. So what I'll do, I'll just remove these loads. Again, remembering to set everything level. Press tear. So place five newton on W two. So I've got two two killing two two newton loads and a one newton load. That's my five. Level the beam. So where you've got your five on. W2, our strain is minus 286. And then the second part is keeping the five Newton load in place, add 10 Newton loads to W1 and W3. So adding it to W1, which is at 100. Let's make sure it's in the right location. And W3, which is at 600. We'll level the beams. Just 
Jed, I've got a strain reading of minus 718. Moving on to part three. This is where we have a slightly different setup in terms of the location of W3. So I'll, I'll remove all the loads. Level the beam. This time W3 is 500. I'm moving that, moving that location. My beam is level, so I tear, set the beam to equilibrium. I'm going to try two load arrangements. So we're going to put five newtons on W1. So that's my two twos and my one newton. And on the right most hanger W3 will be putting 12 newtons. So I'm going to put a 10 newton. And I'll get a 2 newton. Level the beam. And take a strain reading, minus 541. And then for my last scenario, we've got 5 on W1, 10 on W2. So let's just put that 10 on. And then we've got 2 on W3. So if I remove. 12, put on the 2, and we've got a strain of minus 6, 9, 4. Now I've got my strain readings, I can, using the, the formula on the, on the last page, I can work out my practical bending force and we can make a comparison to the theoretical force. The, t the three tables on the back there is where you can write down a summary of the three different parts. Once you've finished the practical, if you can just remove the weights, return the beam back to zero just make sure that there's no parts who've dropped on the floor and ready for the next people are going to be doing the practical. That concludes the bending moment practical video. There is a second video working through the results to compare the practical and theoretical results.